Hey everybody, this is Roy Kennedy, and today I'm taking a look at the Ironheart pack for Marvel Champions. Upgrading all sorts of versions of different Iron Man type suits, but Riri Williams this time. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at Ironheart here. So Ironheart's kind of different. She comes with three different versions of her character uh, that she will progress through as the game goes along. Um, you do have the Riri Williams side, which has three um, recruits, and then also begins the game on this card. Um, set your other identities aside. So it would be off to the side as you're playing the game, um, and then they may be able to come in, which we'll talk about in just a second. Then there is Child Prodigy. Spend one science resource to place one progress counter on Re Williams. Limit once per round. So progress counters. What do they do? Let's check it out. So we start here with Iron Heart. One thwart, two attack, three defense. And I will note um, Re Williams has um, six, six hand size and ten hit points. But on Ironheart side, she has a hand size of four and ten hit points. Not necessarily as good, but then they, you have a level up action here. Remove six progress counters from Ironheart to ready her and swap her with version two of Ironheart. So awesome. So then you would be able to switch out to this and she would be ready. Well, switch out to the second version, version two. You can see the different versions here in the middle. And then her thwart goes up by one. Awesome. And then she has a level up action. So thwart one, attack two, defense three. Level up, remove six progress counters from Ironheart and ready her. And then you'd be able to put a tough status on her and swap her out with version three. A thing to note is that her hand size actually goes up by one. So now you have the normal um, hero hand size of five. Um, and if you look at the other side here, Rhea Williams, Rhea Williams has a uh, child prodigy. Um, her thing here now is you can spend a science resource or two resources of any type. So a little bit more flexibility on being able to level her up. But if you level her up to level three, she now has three thwart, two attack, three defense, and maximum efficiency. Um, remove a progress counter from Ironheart to deal two damage to an enemy. So awesome. So now if you end up getting even more progress counters after you've leveled her all the way up to version three, you'll be able to get rid of those to do two damage and her hand size is six. So regardless of which side you're on, you have the six hand size, which is amazing. Um, and here now you can spend one resource of any type to place progress counters on her. So now you can just spend as many resources as you want for whatever thing and you'll be able to basically do two damage with each one here on the hero side. Also, the thing to note is that this is a hero action. You can remove the progress counters, but it doesn't say once per round. So you can just spam away all of your progress counters and do a ton of damage. So um, you would think it'd be pretty slow going, um, leveling up Ironheart one piece at a time, but there's a lot of ways that you can kind of like upgrade this to make this a little bit quicker with several different cards in her deck. So let's take a look here. Um, the first card here is Upgrade. This is a two cost Photon Blasters. You get plus two hit points, so that's awesome. Bring your hit points up to 12 if you add this out. Then uh, Hero Action, Exhaust Photon Blasters. Deal damage to an enemy equal to Ironheart's version number. So if she's on one, it would be one. If she's on three, it would be three damage. Each time you exhaust this card, doing an extra three damage each time is amazing, actually, um, just by exhausting it. Then we have uh, Pulse Jets. This is a two cost upgrade. You get another two hit points if you have this one. Um, and then Exhaust Propulsion Jets. Remove threat from a scheme equal to Iron Heart's version number. What? That's really good. If you're removing three scheme from a upgrade that you have into play, that, that just, that's just really, really good. Um, then a two cost support, Tony Stark AI. Um, exhaust Tony Stark AI. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Add one of them to your hand and discard the other one. So allowing you to basically get a card into your hand, but you get to kind of scry the deck a little bit too and kind of thin out the things that you don't need. Another great support card there. Then a support here. This is a one cost. Uh, Ronnie Williams. Um, alter Ego Action. Exhaust Ronnie Williams. Choose. You can either heal two damage from Riri Williams or you can place one progress token on her. That seems really good too, because you're trying to progress so you can get to that level version three of her armor, which upgrades a bunch of her other um, upgrades and things like that. Um, cool. Um, then the next thing here is a stroke of genius resource. Response, after you spin this card, place one progress counter on your identity and draw a card. What? 
this is everything you want. It, it not only is it a resource, it basically allows you to do what you want to do with her, which is putting all these progress tokens on trying to level up. And it also is allowing you to draw a card and replace it in your hand after you pay for it. That's a great card. That's an amazing card. Um, then Photon Beams, two cost event here. Um, deal four damage to an enemy and then place one progress counter on Ironheart. Place two progress counters instead if this attack defeats that enemy. So if you have some minions out there or you're able to defeat the villain in one of its stages, you'll be able to put two progress counters on it instead of just one, which of course pushing you closer to having the better versions of Ironheart. And you get a three of those and then fly over. This is a two cost event. Hero action, remove three threat from a scheme. Place one progress token on Ironheart. Press two progress tokens instead if this thwart removes the last threat from a scheme. So once again, more ways to get those progress counters even faster. And of course, you get two of those. New and improved, this is a three cost event. Hero action, choose X different options where X is the number version level of Ironheart. So you can choose one of these things if you're version one, two if you're version two, or all three if you're version three. So you can search your deck for an Ironheart card and add it to your hand. Um, you can give Ironheart a tough status card, or you can ready Ironheart. And this costs three, so it is a little bit expensive, but if you're at version three, being able to do all three of those things seems pretty much worth it. Um, and then you get a couple of those. Um, and then Sector Scan. Um, this is a three cost event. Reduce the cost to play this by X, where X is Ironheart's version number. So this would cost, um, it would be free if you're at version three. Um, it's never gonna actually cost three because uh, if you're at version one, it's still only gonna cost two. Um, but until the end of the round, you may look at the top card of the encounter deck at any time. On this card, I, I, I've been raving about a bunch of other cards. I don't know that I would ever play this card. Like even if it's free, I'd probably still end up discarding it for the resource that it gives you. And the only time I'd ever play this card is if I had nothing else to play and just wanted to get out of my hand. Because looking at the encounter deck, if it allowed me to like discard something off the encounter deck that might help a little bit, but just looking at it isn't really gonna change the reality of the fact that that card's gonna wreck me. Um, then Brawn is her signature ally here. This is a four cost ally, two thwart, three attack. While Brawn is exhausted, he gains resource, generate a science resource, limit once per phase. So if he attacks with that massive three attack, he's also gonna be giving you resources as, as he does it. That's really awesome. So uh, Brawn, he is quite costly with that four cost, especially with all the other Ironheart cards she's gonna wanna play. But if you can get him into play, that'd be really cool. Cloud Nine, this is a three cost ally. One thwart, one attack, exhaust Cloud Nine, choose a player until the end of the phase. Each aerial character that player controls gets plus one thwart. So being able to take down all the schemes with lots of thwart with Cloud Nine. Then a three cost ally, Patriot. This is two thwart. Um, this is two consequential damage when you do that though. And then one attack, one consequential damage. Then uh, he responds after he enters play, choose a champion character. That character gets plus one to each of its basic powers until the end of round. That's pretty solid, um, especially depending on some of the other cards that are in Ironheart's deck, which we'll get to in just a minute. Um, then Falcon is a four cost ally. This is one thwart, two attack one consequential damage on each. Then he responds after Falcon attacks or thwarts, spend a um, power resource or lightning resource um, to ready another champion character you control. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you can basically get one of your other characters to be able to um, go back up. So being able to get your hero to be able to stand up would be pretty cool. Um, and then a two cost event, go all out. This requires a lightning resource while playing for this card. So it has a requirement there. Um, exhaust your hero. So you have to actually exhaust your hero to use this event. Um, deal damage to an enemy equal to the total of the hero's thwart, attack, and defense values. So with just Ironheart, this card that costs two would do three, four, five, six damage. Seems solid. But if you have version three, it would do six, seven, eight damage with this one card. This card is crazy, especially when you consider things like the Patriot that's giving you plus one to each of those basic powers till the end of the round. Um, this could do a ton of damage, um, especially if played at the right time. It's definitely going all out. And you get three of those cards. I think this card is gonna be good in basically any leadership deck because just combining all these stats into an attack that costs three, you're gonna need that um, lightning resource to be able to do it, but I think most people are gonna wanna play that. Um, then R&D Facility, another card that's going to combo great with Go All Out. 
This is a three cost support. It requires you to have two science to actually get it out, but you can use it three times. And then exhaust R&D facility to remove one research counter from it. Choose a friendly character in play, probably your hero. Um, that character gets plus one thwart and plus one attack. So if you get plus one thwart, plus one attack, go all out's gonna be even better. Um, and you get three of those. And then push forward, this costs a science to play while playing this card. Um, you have to spin that. Um, then hero action, thwart, exhaust your hero, remove threat from a scheme equal to your total thwart attack and defense values. So this is basically the same thing as push ahead or uh, all out. Um, but push ahead basically allows you to remove a massive amount of thwart, especially when you have stats that are super high. So that'd be really awesome, especially in a higher player count game where you can get piles of it on there. This could end up clearing off some things pretty well for you, which is pretty awesome there. And I do like that it has a uh, Noir Spider-Man on there. That's pretty sweet. So push ahead. The morale boost, which I think we've seen before, but this just becomes even better when, I mean, this one card here, go all out, ends up comboing with a ton of things in uh, her deck. So morale boost gives, choose a hero until the end of the round. That hero gets plus one to thwart, attack, and defense. I will say I played a go all out in the last game I played with Ironheart and did 16 damage in one attack, and I was uh, pretty happy with that. Um, power of leadership, resource, uh, we've seen this before. It allows you to play those uh, leadership cards easier. Then song guard. Four cost ally, zero thwart, zero attack, one consequential damage for either, and three hit points. Um, what? How would you do this? Well, let's take a look at the thing down here. The response after Songbird enters play, place three shift counters here. Um, while the shift counters are here, um, oh, place up to three shift counters here. Um, they, ah. While the shift counters here are equal to X, she gets, so basically if you choose one shift counter, um, she has plus three attack. If you choose two shift counters, she has plus three thwart. Oh, the attack would have overkill. The thwart would give her aerial as well. Um, and then if you put three on there, it has plus five hit points and then gains retaliate. So it can end up being a, a big old wall that's going to ping people back. It does cost four, but it has that flexibility in there to kind of do what you need to do. Four cost allies are extremely expensive, but that does seem fun. Um, villain here... Uh, or Vivian, um, sorry, uh, cost a two cost ally. I think we've seen her before, maybe in uh, in Vision's deck. Um, but this is a two 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 th thwart, uh, two consequential damage, one attack, one consequential damage. Hero response after she enters play, choose an attachment, uh, non elite, choose an attachment, non elite minion, or non permanent permanent side scheme until the end of the round treat that card as printed text box were blank so basically it can blank out somebody's thing and allow you to kind of do whatever you want to do then agent 13 which we've seen before i think in miles deck um this is a two cost or four cost ally two thwart with asterisk one attack with an asterisk um response after attacks or thwarts choose a shield support and ready that support yeah it's definitely in miles deck um, then a two-cost upgrade, Ingenuity. You can only play if you are a genius. Um, max one per player. Um, exhaust it to generate a science resource. So you get three of those. And then go for champions. Um, this is a three-cost card, max one per deck. Play only if your identity has a champion's trait. Um, each champion character in play cannot take damage until the end of the round. So this card seems pretty good for anybody who's a champion. Overall, it does cost three. Um, so if you're playing multiplayer, it might be a little bit better, especially if you're playing with more than one champion out there. I feel like this card should have been in Nova's deck, especially with the wild resource on there. But the f it comes with one in the Ironheart deck here. Then Helicarrier, three, su three cost support. We've seen this a million times. allows you to play stuff for cheaper. And then Minor Setback is her obligation. You give it to the Riri Williams player. Remove one progress counter from your identity. Then discard this card. If no progress counters were removed this way, do yourself one face down encounter card and shuffle this card into the encounter deck. So just a minor setback, messing up one of your upgrades. Actually, as far as obligation goes, that's not the mo worst out there. And then, of course, we have her nemesis and things like that. And I like to let people discover these on their own. But if you want to pause the video or whatever and check them out and see kind of what they do. It looks like she has a evil cyborg nemesis there that's trying to uh, attack her, which of course makes sense. And then the couple extra cards we get here. 
I do like that Ironheart comes with a bunch of allies that you can add in. So these are just really cool. Um, this is two bombshell, two thwart, uh, two consequential damage, three attack with an asterisk, and one consequential damage. Play only if your identity has a champion. Um, uh, divide damage from bombshells attack among in each enemy as evenly as possible. So bombshell is going to smash all the enemies at the same time, which is pretty cool. Uh, Wasp, this is a two cost ally. Two thwart, two consequential damage, one attack, one consequential damage. Play only if your ally, if your identity has a champion's trait. Wasp ignores the guard keyword, guard and patrol keyword, so she can kind of get to where she wants and be able to shrink down and attack who she wants, which seems pretty thematic. Um, Pinpoint, this is a two cost ally, one thwart, two attack with two consequential damage. Um, play only if you have the champion's trait. Hero interrupt when a player. When a player card would be placed in a discard pile from play, exhaust this and shuffle that card into the deck instead. So if you have an upgrade that ends up getting discarded, you can get it back faster. Um, and it's cool to have these allies that can all be used as um, different characters that you can put in those champions decks, um, which will be like Nova and Ironheart and things like that, which would be really cool. And then another cool thing that they've started doing is they're putting in basically modules now that instead of having as many hero cards extra, you're going to have extra cards with a module that you can add in to different villains in different scenarios, adding more replayability to the game. So this is Zizax. So come on, Zax. Um, this is a minion here. Two scheme, two attack. Um, it gets plus one attack and plus one hit points where X is equal to the total number of lightning resource cards in the, the engaged player controls. So if you have a bunch of upgrades out there, this guy could be really mean, especially if they are lightning ones. So Miss Marvel coming for you. Or not Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel. Um, and the boost on here, um, if you have at least two lightning resources in your hand, put it in play, engage with you. So it's trying to come up there and steal your energy. I'm guessing a lot of things here are gonna have to do with the lightning bolt symbol, which is pretty cool to have just these weird different side schemes that kind of do all sorts of different stuff. Just a bunch of cards, yeah, that definitely have to do with the theme of messing you up if you have a bunch of the lightning bolt symbol in there. So that's kind of an interesting take, because it's like if you're going to play with this, you would obviously want to pick a character that doesn't do much with the lightning bolt symbol, unless you just want to make it really hard for yourself. You you play Captain Marvel against this character, and you're going to have uh, not as good of a time, because Captain Marvel's going to have a ton of lightning bolt symbols. But yeah, that's everything that comes in the Iron Heart pack. So I really, really enjoyed the way that Ironheart works as you you have to play the game sort of a different way and I really enjoy when Marvel Champions takes the packs and makes you kind of play the game slightly differently with the different heroes and adds a lot of that theme and flavor into it. Riri Williams is constantly upgrading her armor suits in the comics and then it makes it cool that she's doing it in the hero deck as well. You kind of have to like pace yourself as you're playing with this character because she gets better over time as you slowly upgrade those armors but there's a ton of cards in here that allow you to do that as well so if you're playing against a villain that's going to like smash you down really quickly she might not be able to get up as fast and do what you want to do as fast as you want but if you're able to mitigate everything that's happening on the board and play that little bit of a longer game and get her upgraded she is straight fire and blasting everybody with photon blast and doing crazy stuff when she gets that suit fully upgraded especially with her really cool upgrades that allow you to do damage and remove threat um when you play her you you kind of like don't want to do the whole like speeding through the villain because you really want to slow down and get her upgraded fully but then once you're there it feels so cool you almost don't want the game to end because you're doing so many cool things i have the suit and now i'm hitting really hard and now i have those cool upgrades that allow me to use all of my stats to do damage or all of my stats to remove threat um it's really cool to Feel that progression as the character goes along. I really think this is an awesome pack and a lot of fun to play. I really enjoyed how all this stuff comes together. Leadership is always cool, getting the allies and stuff out there, but the whole putting on the progression counters really makes this deck fun. So I love Ironheart. If you're interested in this at all and you want a character that allows you to give that sense of building up, not necessarily crazy combos, but slowly building up the character and getting upgrades as the game goes along, definitely check out Ironheart. This is going to get an excellent for me. I definitely enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. Ironheart's a blast to play. Anyway, 
This has been Roy Kane. I'm excited to be reviewing some more of these Marvel Champions packs. Let me know in the comments down below what characters you're currently playing with, what character you're having the most fun with, and what character really fits your play style. Is it a character that you really gravitate toward? Do you like to slowly upgrade stuff? Do you like to do tons of combos super fast? Do you like to just get tons of allies? What hero are you enjoying? Make sure to leave that in the comments down below, and I'll see you on the next one.